In this lecture, we're going to continue talking some more about regular expressions. And in this case, we'll go back and look a little bit more about how these can fit into the, the pipelines that you, you often are creating with the data frame when you use tidyverse tools. So as a reminder, that string detect function that we were looking at has this general usage. And again, this is generic code just to show the usage, but it has this general usage where you first put in the string and that's the vector that you wanna check. And then you put in the pattern that you wanna check for using those special, those special rules for creating an expression um, to, to match that we just looked at in the last video lecture. So uh, for example, if you're trying to detect misses and a period, you could do string detect on that column and then match to that. And then you'll get back these true and false values where anywhere there was a match, it will be true and anywhere there wasn't, it will be a false. Now what that means that you get these true false facts is that the string detect is really useful for using inside a filter. If you remember when you use filter in your dplyr, um, uh, pipe pipeline, that is going to keep the things that evaluate to true in the logical expression you put inside. So this is an easy way to pull out and keep, for example, just the people where their title starts with misses. So we can look at an example for that. And for this, go through and um, make sure that you have tidyverse loaded. You're also probably uh, going to want the Titanic library, and then the Titanic train data frame. So let's remind ourselves what that looks like. And I'll pipe into head so we just see the beginning. So we've got this name right here. Let's say we want to filter down so that we only have the rows where the title is Mrs. MRS. So inside filter, we can put one of these string detect functions. We need to say which of the string, which of the uh, uh, vectors of the character string we want to check against. So that's the column we want to check, name right here. And then the other thing that we need to put in is the pattern we want to check. So in this case, we want to pull out misses. And again, we're ending with a period, but that's one of these special characters. So we need to put the um, two of the backslashes to protect that. So now when we run this, you can see that it's only pulling out these people who had a title that was Mrs. We could do the same thing, for example, if we wanted to pull out everybody who was a doctor, we could do it this way. And you can see now we're pulling out uh, just the doctors. Uh, the string extract function, on the other hand, will pull out the string, the actual match. Um, it follows similar conventions. The difference is really just in what it gives you at the end. So we could try that. A lot of times you might want to use that with a mutate function as, in, instead to add on a new column. So let's do mutate in this case. And let's do um, like dr title maybe. And we'll do the string extract. Again, we need to say which column we're getting it from and then the pattern. So we'll do doctor again and again, since the period's a special character, we need to match that way. So now if we look, you can see that for many of these, it's not showing anything because it doesn't have doctor here. But if we filter down, um, we can look and see where the dr title is not missing. We'll use that is.na and then use a bang operator at the beginning of it to, to flip and to pull the things that are just not missing. So you can see it's pulled that. And again, these are just cases where doctor was in the title of the person. Um, so here I'm showing that example. Similarly for misses, this is adding a new column with that. And again, you can see that it it gives that full title in cases where there's a match, and in cases where there isn't, it gives a missing value. You can do this and kind of like build up, so we can use any of our patterns. For example, we could start doing like M, R, and then one or more S's. So in this case, it's pulling out misses, but it could also pull out the, the let's see, 
about an asterisk so we can pull out Mr. as well. Great. So now we're pulling out Mrs. and Mr. because it's saying that it needs to start MR. There can be zero or one S's and then it needs to end with a period. And then if we wanted to build out, we can build out to having A to Z and then one or more lowercase uh, letters. And so now we're getting closer to pulling out that full title. Uh, so this is building up a little bit and giving another example. In this case, anything that starts with N and ends in a period. And then another thing that I wanted to show is how to use string extract, um, excuse me, how to use string match if you have a pattern that's kind of got borders on it. So all of the patterns that we've done up to this point, we were pulling out everything we wanted. So let's let's actually go back one slide and let's see that the, that we wanted, there might be cases where we have this kind of pattern that ends in a period, but we know that we could get just these unique titles by starting at the comma, that it's only going to be things after a comma and space and then something and then the period that really are the title for the person. So to get that pattern, we would need to do a comma and a space, then any capital letter, and then any lowercase no, uh, a letter, one or more of those, and then a period. So we can grab that, and in this case, I'll, we'll call this just title, and we can take out this part because we're not going to get any missing values, I don't think. All right, so we've got the title now. And we're using this kind of like border things like the comma to make sure that we we pull it out and extract it correctly, but we might not ultimately want that. So we can use this string match function to pull out just pieces within a larger pattern that we're matching. So what that does, it will let us put a larger expression in, in terms of the pattern, but we can use parentheses to mark off just a piece that we want. And then it'll give us a matrix back where the first column matches everything, and then the second gives just what was inside the parentheses. We can pull this out, and this gives us our match that we might want to use, where we've taken those boundary elements that were helping us to confirm the match, but things that we didn't really care about later, like the comma and the period. It's taking those out and just pulling the pieces that we actually want. So we can do those inside mutate as well. So in this case, we'll do string match. And the one tricky thing, because that returns that... Um, that matrix, we need to pull out just the second column of that. So I'm going to add the square bracketing to extract just that second column. And then the other piece here is we'll put parentheses around the part that we actually want to keep. So we want to keep the things that start with a capital letter and then any of the lowercase letters after that up to the point that we get to a period. So if we look at that now, you can see that for the title, we have extracted just those titles. Now, this is really helpful in this example. It actually turns out for this machine learning competition that these titles were pretty good predictors of whether somebody survived or not. Um, they really help because they help to distinguish some of those special cases, like, like lady and all of that, and they also help in, in picking out male or female, but then also the age. So, for example, um, a male who's younger gets that master title rather than mister. So once we do that, we can kind of build up our pipeline. We could do things like figure out which, which of these are the most common, which of these titles. So we could take what we have here where we've added on this title, and now we can group by that, and then we can count. So that's giving us a count of all the unique values. We might want to get that in order. So we could do a range and then descending and it's this n column, this count column. And so now we've got that and we can see that the most common title by a lot was Mr. and then Miss and Mrs. Master. And then we get down to some of these more unusual ones and it looks like there was one case where there wasn't a match on that title. We can do some other things with this as well. So let's get back to that idea of filter with string detect. 
we might want to pick out just the names that start with a certain letter. So we can do filter and then string detect. Again, we're going to use the name column, but in this case, let's say we only wanted things that start with a capital A. We can do this caret and then a capital A, and the way that you can read that is things where the very first letter in the character string is a capital A. So if we do that, let me pipe ahead at the end so that we're, we can just look at the beginning. So you can see now we're pulling out just the rows where there's a name that starts with the letter A. The next thing that we can do is we can match things a certain number of times. So we might want to look for matches for capital I, but look for the ones that are like two or three or, or something like that, because those might be cases where we have somebody who is named the same thing as their father or their grandfather. So we can um, try to detect those and we'll do a capital I. Let's try just that first. But you can see that this is pulling out cases where the name includes something that starts with an I. So we need to do those square bracket, uh, squiggly brackets after. And now we can look, and this is going to pick out just the ones that have um, two or more of these I's in a row. The next thing that we can do is we can use the square brackets to give some choices in some cases. So there might be a last name that we're looking for. My last name's Anderson, but there are a few ways to spell that. So I might want to look for cases where it's spelled either with an O at the end or with an E at the end. So in that case, I can put in the full name, Anderson, but that place where we have two options, I can use square brackets there and give the two possible options. And now we can pull out and we should be able to see that we have some cases, yes, here's an S-O-N, and then we have S-E-N. So it's able to match either of those two possibilities. So we can go back to that idea of starting with a certain letter, and we can expand that too using these character classes. So let's go through, and before we were looking at just things that started with an A, let's say that we wanted to pull the names that start with an A or a B. We can do that by including A or B here, and now you can see that we're including both of those types of names. On the other hand, if we want something at the end, we can do the dollar sign at the very end, and then it will just match based on having that character right at the end of the string. So if we wanted to look for things that end in a lowercase b, we can do it like this. And you can see here we're getting names that end that way. If it could be uppercase or lowercase, we could put those in this character. And now we can see that that's including some initials. Just as a note, there's an older um, family of R functions that's called grep. It does pretty similar things. Um, I think that the stringer packages or just functions are just a little bit easier to, to use, but you might see examples of grep in older code in particular. So I wanted to put this in because I really do feel this way about regular expressions. This is from a wonderful uh, cartoon series called XKCD. So um, they put this in several panels and I'll go through, but they say, whenever I learn a new skill, I concoct an elaborate fantasy scenario where it lets me save the day. So they've got these two people here. Oh no, the killer must have followed her on vacation. But to find them, we had to search through 200 megabytes of emails looking for something formatted, like an address. And the other person says, it's hopeless. And then you hear in the background, everybody stand back. I know regular expressions. And then the guy sweeps through and he's doing Perl here. That's a classic programming language um, for using regular expressions, but it's a very similar pattern to doing them in R. And then sweeps off, of course, and saves the day. And there really have been some cases where um, I found in my own work, I've been able to pull stuff out of the data using regular expressions, but it just seemed like it might be hopeless to try to figure out otherwise. So they're a very powerful tool to know and use. So as a note, for some more on these patterns, you can look at the help file for um, Stringy for search reg X and make sure that you do those in the back tick. So let's see, Stringy, and actually we might need first to do library Stringy. You shouldn't need to install this if you've installed Stringr because they should come together. So let's see, it's Stringy, and then we're gonna look for search reg, reg X. the 
the part for the help file. So that's come up right here. And as you scroll down, you can see that there's some information about these special characters and these different rules for creating the patterns. Um, there's a section on this in our For Data Science, Chapter 14. So if you want to learn more, you might want to check that out. And then something else that you can use are these interactive tools. These can be really helpful. So if you go here, it gives you a place to try out regular expressions. And it's using a style for setting those up that's more common in some other programming languages where you put them between the, these two forward slashes. But you can consider this as a space to kind of build these expressions. So as you put like a capital R in, you can see down here it's highlighted every case where there's a match of that. Then you could check if you wanted and like add in any lowercase letter and it's just one. So you can see in this case that it's done matches for that, but it hasn't done a match here where we had a capital R and then a capital E. And then if we want to extend to do more of those we can do the plus sign and there it's going until the next case where it meets something that is not a lowercase letter so this lets you kind of play around and figure those out and you could even do things like maybe you want to find the end of each sentence so that's going to be um, a period and then a space so we can do that match and in this case this is true for most cases outside of r you protect those special characters with a single backslash instead of two for some reason in r you have to do two to do those protections but as you build them up in these online places you'll only do one and then you can come down and you could change things down here too so you could put in your own text um, if you wanted to do an example Actually, we could do this way. So we could put in something that looks like the data we're trying to match against, and then we could come up and we could do that same kind of pattern to try to make sure that we're that we're expressing it the way that we should. And that lets you see that you're picking things out, and you can even try like those parentheses to see what part you'd be capturing if you if you did just that part, I believe. 